Yo, what is going on guys? In this video, I am going to be showing you the most optimal one bar gank bow setup that's possible. And by optimal, I mean what does the most damage output. So, we'll be running Red Man in, Oaken Soul, and Scavenging Demise of a one piece Balorg. Uh, precise bow with a weapon damage enchant and then I'll go through and explain why I think this is the highest damage setup so if we uh, mark the I need to be somewhere else mark the target shadow Let's see the chant crit. I see that is quite powerful. I think they do the best hits. Um, so the reason, just looking at numbers. There's quite a lot of damage in one hit. So, the reason I say this is the most powerful um, setup impossible is because the scavenging demise does a huge amount of poison damage. And the red mountain set does a huge amount of flame damage. And I do think they've got the highest tool tips of any sets in the game that proc off when you deal damage. So that's why I would use them two sets. And obviously the one piece battle is for the weapon damage. All divines obviously as that will maximise the uh, Munder Stone. So get you more damage. The only thing I would need to change on this setup is you do want all the jewellery infused. As this will make the initial hits hit harder. I do have one piece. Uh, there is one piece of stamina on this setup which is not optimal there's nothing you can do because it's part of the red mountain set so because obviously i'm stacking into magicka and a lot of people ask me why you're stacking into magicka um because it's got the damage scales with your highest stat so the highest stat will be magicka and the reason we do stack into magicka is because we have this slotted which is a strong heal and when you have that slotted you get max magicka by 8% with that slotted. So basically you can get a higher magicka pool than stamina pool on a night blade. So obviously your output will be slightly higher if you do everything into magicka. So obviously if I had... Uh, actually I don't think the magicka can go any higher but obviously the damage could go a little higher if I remove them to, to as infused um, it is all running medium so you are lacking the penetration but that is why um, you probably could go with a sharpened bow here I do like precise um, you need a one piece light obviously because it's all medium so you need light just for a little bit of pen. It is low, the penetration. But, yeah, it goes to about 9k. And then obviously that's why the uh, piercing mark is essential for the major breach. Because that's obviously going to give you another 6k. So, and if you actually use cloak. See, this it's good numbers, even though the uh, penetration is a bit low. And obviously we're running the uh, Lover Mundus to make up for all the medium. So, I think it's a nice combination. And obviously you must be at least Vampire Stage 2 for the extra damage coming out of stealth. The problem with this build is there's not really a lot of flex spots. I mean, you can run toxic barrage but I prefer the dawnbreaker because obviously it's going to make the snipe hit harder you need concealed weapon on because that 
increases your damage done by 10%. So you need the cloak, you need the dawnbreaker, you need the concealed weapon, you need the snipe obviously, you need the heal. So the only uh, flex spot is the piercing mark really, which I did used to run in pale. And it does hit like an absolute truck. But um, I've just been using piercing mark obviously for the major breach. And that's the problem with one bar builds is that you have a lack of um, bar space. So obviously if you want to gain that and put in pale, you could put there. And then to compensate, obviously you could then run say night mothers on the body because obviously that's going to give you the major breach um, if I show let's see if we've got night here if I put all night mothers on so that's all light and one medium I might have to change the helmet to a medium. So we've got two medium and five light. So let's have a look what the stats are. So you've got a lot more penetration. But obviously the weapon damage will go down. Um, could try, so but obviously yeah, you can then take that off because obviously you've got a lot more pen. Or you could go for crazy pen, and do the major breach as well. Let's see what the uh, red mountain hits with that. So the numbers are still pretty good. You could run red mountain and night mothers if you want the extra pen. Um, but I still think the overall damage with the scavenging demise is better because the proc is just so it's, it's just so powerful um, it is becoming a lot more common so people do get used to it that is the problem with they are dodgeable but um, obviously these builds are designed for element of surprise obviously if someone's facing you and they're aware of what you're about to do and you're cloaking like that and they can see you then they probably are going to roll dodge out of the way and the whole point of this build is to hit people when they're distracted by someone else or they're doing something else and you attack at the opportune moment that's the whole point of gank builds because I've had a lot of people say well you know this won't kill top end people or you know anyone that's experienced knows how to deal with this yeah well they all still make mistakes and I've took out a lot of people that are you know high-end players you know because it's, it's the element of surprise that's the whole point it's not a 1v1 dueling build it's, it's it's a gank build so you are taking people by surprise but uh, this I still think this is the best setup possible so you do your Reaper's Mark, you go into Shadow, Snipe Light Attack, and so the damage is just, it's just too good. Out of all my Terror Gank builds, I do believe that this is the best setup. I mean, <clears throat> you could run Defilers, which is the other more set. It doesn't hit as hard as obviously Red Mountain. As you can see by the tooltip, Red Mountain is nearly 11k, and Defiler is only about 5.5k, but it does put a nice stun on the enemy, so that can stop them moving, which is quite nice. But for sheer raw damage, you know, you, that is the best setup. And like I said, the only things I probably would change is I would change these two infused. For even more damage and I would probably change that to uh, sharpened so then you can get the you'll get the penetration over 10k and then obviously you'd be debuffing them as well 
but like I said that is a flex spot you can do impale or piercing mark um, you could put another heel on if you needed to but I mean like I said it's that is such a good heel you don't really need anything else and that is the best weapon enchantment, the weapon damage enchantment, because that will proc on snipe. So obviously that's going to then make the proc sets of the Red Mountain and uh, Scavenging Demise hit harder. And so that would say is the most optimal. And food, you could run a higher max magic of food and get another 3k. But um, the problem is if you go too far into damage, I think you know your survivability is going to go through the floor. That's the problem. Um, yeah, so if you run that sort of food, Magicka version, you could squeeze out probably about 33k Magicka, maybe 34. But it's going to cost you so much stam and health. I, I believe that is the best food to run is the Bewitched Sugar Skulls and obviously with a medium uh, medium armour setup, you want to be running the Lover just remember to change that one back in one piece light <coughs> yeah so definitely in my opinion the best Terra Gank setup um, but yeah the only thing I've changed is the just one of the skills um, and obviously CPs the CPs you will have or you should have is liquid efficiency as you will go through a lot of potions and they're expensive so always have that on always have your steeds blessing for the movement and obviously the ration as well for your food and gifted rider if you can that's the only things I would run for um, for PvP really and obviously the blue I have played around with a lot and obviously because I'm uh, Khajiit I would definitely run the fighting finesse and then you've got your master at arms and deadly aim which are the single target and direct damage I was previously running Wrathful Strikes, but again, I think the critical damage is better than that. So, Backstabber, Deadly Aim, Master of Arms, and Fighting Finesse. And obviously, in the red CP, Celerity is nice for the fast movement rate. If you do gank someone and it goes wrong, you've got the movement rate. And Bastion, which I didn't know for ages, I've only recently found out a few months ago that that's another damage boost anyone that shields up you're going to be doing more damage on them so make sure you have that slotted and obviously a bit of recovery is nice or you could run the armor but I prefer the recovery slightly and just a bit of health so I think that's the best optimal CP for a gank build and as regards to race um, it's a bit of a debate what is the best it's either a Khajiit or a Dark Elf um, with the Dark Elf you're going to get more max stats and you're going to get more weapon damage and spell damage uh, I think the Dark Elf has 2000 this only has about 1000 but obviously you are going to get the critical damage and you're going to get better heals so it's really down to preference I prefer the Khajiit um, I did used to prefer the Dark Elf but I prefer the Khajiit but they will both hit probably just as hard um, but it is it's fun to play this build I keep coming back to this one all the other setups I've tried um, Defilers uh, New Moon the Swamp Raider uh, you know I've tried most of the good stuff 
the crit build I did try the, the crit build with the G Gorman's critical damage critical damage and the uh, what's it, Alders Wrath I tried that Alders Wrath and Gormand you know because I thought oh Khajiit and just that can, it just didn't seem to hit as hard to me either all that critical damage bonuses I think it was just overkill so I think this is the best optimal setup for a one bar Nightblade bow gank so I'll probably release some more footage of using this build again uh, and I'm also going to be releasing a uh, two hander uh, sort of gank, uh, I called it the beef blade candle jack uh, one bar build um, it's sort of like a gank build but it's also can go toe to toe for obviously a period of time, it's not a full blown uh, dueling build 1v1 but it's uh, it can sort of hold its own a little bit and the damage is nice so I'll be releasing that as well but yeah looks like I'm already for Halloween as well that's probably my favourite event but yeah obviously I could make all this I probably will make all this yellow as well just to get the divines uh, up a bit and get a bit more pen from the Munderstone because I, you know, I've made the other sets gold because you know I wasn't sure what's best, but I think this is best. Red mountain and scavenging, and I'm probably going to make it all gold. Done about the jewellery, as that's a bit expensive. But mind you, I do have quite a few plating, probably about. 13 I think gold plating but yeah anyway guys I'll leave it there um, this is my uh, opinion of the most optimal setup for the one bar bow gank uh, and stay tuned for the next video